Well, well, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, today I'm Victor Zwegen360 who is going to be telling you how to make one of the very useful things for your 2D games, or actually any type of game. It's basically the character selector menu. I'll just do a simple but uh, uh, working example of how it's actually going to be. So, let's go to a new application and to the first frame and first select the uh, active object place it somewhere here and now we'll need to make a <laughs> the character selection stripe from which Actually, we are like going to be choosing the uh, available characters, so let's make it a bit wider and double click, make a new picture, but basically empty it. And now, what we're going to do is separate it into four segments, or actually, let's just choose the black color for the box. Make a rectangle and split it into these several boxes. Hopefully, this should be enough. Uh, then we select the box, copy it by pressing Ctrl C or right here, press paste by Ctrl V and move it to the right. Move it to the, another one to the right. Just keep pasting them. And there we have a stripe of four characters. Obviously, there is actually nothing yet there with the characters, but uh, I mean, <laughs> the characters are actually not in these selected frames yet, but uh, we'll be fixing that in a minute. So it should be about this uh, height in the end, but yeah, let's not worry about that yet. We click crop to get rid of the bit on the right, and now we start placing the actual characters. So let's just select different uh, colored uh, circles, colored in circles. So it's going to be one character is a gray circle. No need to do it accurate, you just do the rough things. The orange, no need to be exact, it's just a character selector. And I'm doing it just for demonstration purposes. So let's do quick four characters. And here we go. We have a little bit of <laughs> like traffic light, if you can call it that. <laughs> system, but actually it is our four characters. Gray circle, orange, green, and red. We click OK. And there we have it. There is our uh, character selection um, uh, stripe that is going to go left and right. And we make an active that's actually going to be the uh, area in which the selected character is going to be in. So we make it this one. Clear. And just give it a different color uh, square box as if to and uh, show that this is going to be the selected uh, character. Make the size a bit thicker. Here we go. So, if you are not following, basically this is what it's going to be like. This stripe of characters is going to move left and right, while this is actually uh, um, 
this active tool is going to be showing which one is selected so which one is actually in the uh, selection area so <laughs> here we have we should probably have a, a little string that tells us which one is currently selected select string put it somewhere here and basically we need to go to event editor or oh, actually first of all we need to go to uh, the movement mode of the stripe with the characters and give it a a direction movement and then we need to change number of directions to reset basically and just have it left and right so the stripe can move left and right now uh, in order to stop uh, the stripe from moving uh, too far outside of the screen for instance we need to place two uh, of the blocking actives you can just call them blocks basically so fill it in with red for instance and rename it to block and we duplicate it and place another one somewhere there I'm actually not, not sure um, I'll have to test out how far it can go so if we were to move it all the way I'm moving it with my uh, arrow keys at the moment if we move it all the way so that the red one is selected like somewhere there then it needs to be right at the left bit so it can only be selected from right to left so this is about right oh, let's put it a bit up so that the selector can actually be there this is obviously a rough thing if you want to draw it properly you can spend some time on that and uh, Basically, what we're going to do is, um, first of all, say, uh, first of all, we need to obviously test it. So, we run the application. And we can see that the stripe is going from left to right in any direction. That's because we didn't actually tell the blocks to block the selector. So, if we go to events we do the collision between uh, the selector and the block then the movement for selections is going to be stopped the selection stripe I call it selections basically yeah so now if we test it it should be going just fine And basically, um, we are going to be doing the event that allows blocks to be invisible at, from the start of the frame. So, at the start of frame, make the block invisible. And it will still block it, it just won't be visible on the screen. So, now it's working fine. And now, what we're going to do is basically uh, the hardest uh, bit of the character selection. Tell the program when it wants to select which character. So, we're going to add new condition and check the position of the selection. Test position of active or rather compare x position to a value because we actually are worried only about x position so 
for now um, let's uh, uh, ch let's check which position it is at now at this point and let's say if it is 432 it's 432 at the moment so if it moves up to this point it's still going to be selected as a gray character so if it's 407 or more than that so if its x position is 425 430 or 437 doesn't really matter it's still going to be selecting the gray character so anything above 407 and yeah let's make that event if x position is greater or equal to 407 And here's where we need to use uh, the global variable. You'll see why in a few minutes. We go to values, select application, and add a new value, and call it character selected. So X position is equal to more or equal to 407 then the global value will be set to 1 and that is basically uh, which character uh, uh, will give each character a number so obviously this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 the four characters so now all we've got to do is have several other positions uh, for three other characters so by the way these two will be in a range let's just check the last one to start with where about it's actually finishing uh, I mean, but where about the red one is starting to be selected, and that's about right. That's about here, two fifty nine. So, if it's equal to its x position is equal to two fifty nine or less, then is going to be selecting the fourth one. So lower or equal. 259 then this is going to be set to the fourth one and you'll see what uh, uh, the character selected uh, value is going to do in the further events but for now let's just concentrate on setting the global value depending on the position of our active selections so if it is equal to 260 or more until about 328 or less yeah so this is going to be for the third one. So uh, if it's greater or equal than 260 and what did we say? Uh, don't want to move it. <laughs> so I selected it in here. So if it's 328 or more so 
So let's add another condition. <clears throat> if the position is equal to uh, uh, which one did I say again? I have a bad short term memory, don't I? <laughs> 328. 328. Three twenty-eight, and it needs to be less than okay. Then it's going to be selecting the third character, and obviously now if we do a uh, uh, the other one is going to be less than 407 and more or equal to 328. So let's edit that to less than 407 but less uh, wrong one. <laughs> insert <laughs> but higher or equal to 328 okay then it's going to select the second character now let's see how it works out by clicking run application still on there and let's check the global values. Uh, this one. 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. If you're keeping an eye on this uh, value, it's basically changing as we're sliding across the stripe. So it is working. <laughs> now, what we need to do is add new condition that tests the global value and tells us what happens when that value is equal to that. So basically, uh, if you're confused, don't worry. Compare to a global value when the character selected is equal to 1, then copy it to the next one, 2, <laughs> 3, Or four. Here's what's going to happen. <laughs> well, first of all, the alterable string will become different. So something else will become written there. I think the first one was gray character. The second one was, if I remember correctly, orange. Third one was green. And fourth one <laughs> was red. And what we need to do is to have always condition that will always display this uh, alterable string in the string object. So now let's test it out. Each time we change a character, now it's orange, now it's green, now it's red. So it actually tells us here everything that's uh, all the characters that are being selected, it changes immediately which is good. Now another thing is uh, if you want to add the name uh, selected to the character you can do it quite easily with the edit box object and pretty much add one event 
that will uh, make use of the applications global uh, string and we'll call the string character name <laughs> so basically we add another always event and uh, we change the global string character name it's already selected to whatever is being typed in to the edit box so we get text from the edit box is that simple so now let me show you uh, how it's gonna work every time uh, first of all run the application and uh, add the new object to monitor in the debugger or actually we, we don't even need that we can just uh, check the global strings and see uh, the character name being changed as we type it in so green apple as we can see the character name has already changed in the program if we delete some of the characters they get deleted as well so that's really handy if we change the characters um, uh, in the character selection they also get changed so yeah that's a really handy feature because now you'll see how it's gonna work if we create the new frame let's make a basic character that uh, has four animations so create a new animation for gray orange green and red and then delete the stopped animation so basically what we're gonna have here is the gray circle oh, change the colors so the gray circle orange circle actually we can just copy and paste um, and then recolor the character <laughs> since it's just the circle for the ease of uh, editing green can be done as this color red can be done as this color and we're all set to test it out the only thing I'd say is uh, uh, let's just add uh, it a movement just a basic one to show that it's actually a character a direction movement and yeah now if we test it out it's gonna move in all directions as we press the arrow keys so yeah Another thing is we're going to give it a name that is going to be read from a global string that we set in the first frame. So if we add a string uh, there it is and add the new condition always and the string's position is going to be always above our active character object so here we have it now uh, let's obviously test if it's moving with our character yes it is roughly roughly remember <laughs> this is just for testing and now what we're going to do is select whether the character changes animations depending on the global values so compare a global value character selected equals to one equals to two 
equals to 3, equals to 4, and depending on that, we'll change the animation sequence of our active character to gray. orange green or red so another thing we're going to do in always event is set the alterable string change the alterable string to the name of the character that got saved from the first frame in character name string, basically, yeah, if that makes sense. And then display the alterable, alterable string in this object. So let's just add uh, another little button here that will allow us to switch between uh, uh, the frames. Let's just put it as a uh, separate active object with an arrow that points to the next frame in a way. Yep. So when we click that, we move on to next frame. Give it an event that when user clicks on an object left mouse and we'll click on this one we jump to next frame so let's test it out our very own character creator let's select the orange uh, no actually let's select the red I like the red <laughs> and call it Humpty Dumpty And here we have it, the red character who is Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> and he's moving around, and his name follows him, and it's the same one that we said in the previous frame. So, uh, <laughs> if you want to like add some special effect to it, then, uh, yeah, uh, you can just add uh, different things, like... Um, perspective object or yeah let's actually choose perspective set it out a little bit play around with the settings choose effects from built-in effects in clicked infusion 2.5 you can do pretty much whatever you want it's only limited by your imagination <laughs> and uh, let's set it up a bit have one sine wave Make it larger over here and towards this direction. Yeah, so you can have character selector in 3D, something like that, and it still changes the values because these are based on the global values so we know those are being changed so yeah you can do pretty much um, whatever you want once you've got the basic system working and uh, it's still gonna work so if we run the application uh, enter yep like <laughs> the name of testing character and then choose the gray character here we have it so yeah I hope uh, that kind of enlightened you and gave you some ideas for your character create menu and um, if you got any questions then feel free to ask them in the comments I'll obviously post uh, <laughs> that link to the file uh, somewhere either in description or in the comment under the video uh, to this file that I'm gonna uh, save and yeah good luck in your games 
Hope you enjoyed the video. That was Victor's Wagon 360. See you next time.